as a first question, what were the differences working with, with James Brown as a band leader and with uh, Mr. Clinton? Well, with James Brown, it was more um, like, you know, in the Army, ABC, basic training, you know, uh, <laughs> serious boot camp, you know. Um, but with George, you know, he, he allowed us to um, ex really express ourselves and what we brought to the table. He kind of noticed what we brought and allowed us to let it out. James, on the other hand, you know, he knew what we had, but he didn't want us to know. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he, he wanted us to think we was not happening. George, on the other hand, he wanted us to know we was happening and bring it, bring it, and keep bringing it. You know, uh, but with James, you know, um, his whole thing was to tear you down. Uh, I guess you call it, what do you call it, uh, reverse psychology? Yeah. And it worked. It worked. I mean, <laughs> it worked. I mean, <laughs> I mean, because we we always thought we wasn't happening, you know. Although we found out, you really? know, you really thought you weren't happening. Well, at, at first, when he started doing that, it was like, dang. Because mm -hmm. when you first get with him, you feel like, you know, ain't, ain't no way we can be with James Brown, you know. Right. And and we was just waiting for him to tell us we was good or we was, you know, something. And he always said. Y'all ain't got it, son. You ain't got it. You ain't got the one. <laughs> yeah, but you, you, you played with him for, what, two years, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it must have happened pretty quickly that you knew you were happening. I mean. Yeah, yeah. Especially, especially a young, long-haired sucker right off the street, and we just getting from, coming out from the riots. Yeah. You know, we really <laughs> knew we was happening, you yeah. know. So to, um, and we wasn't hearing it from nobody but somebody like a James Brown that we ain't happening. You know, I mean, we wasn't going to take that from anybody, you know, so but but this was James Brown. So if he said you ain't happening, you are not happening. So that means we had to practice more and more and more well, and more. That's what he was working for, I guess. And he he, he did yeah. it. So, so Bernie, um, working with 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 George, how was it different than working with David Byrne? I mean, basically, mm -hmm. David Byrne, Bernie did a lot of work with the talking heads and he brought he brought the funk to the talking heads without question. But, I mean, David Byrne and George Clinton, I think you, you won't find two human beings more different than that, I would, I would say. So. Uh, first of all, they're both geniuses. Yeah. Second of all, they're both conceptualists. Yeah, yeah okay, that's <laughs> true. Only yeah. thing difference, George is the senior, the godfather. Yeah. So David learned from him and from whatever other influences uh, that he got from his predecessors. Yeah. The other thing is, when I joined, I didn't know who talking hood to where I, I got a call from Jerry Harrison and uh, he asked me if I'd like to join the group. I said, well, who are you? A <laughs> 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 new wave or whatnot. And uh, they invited me to uh, New York to the studio to check out some of their material and um, which was Sigma Sound, you, right, you know? Right. Um, yep. And I heard the stuff and saw what they wanted to do. They had to inject, inject themselves with, uh, y'all know what. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the rest is history. And what was interesting that they kind of worked the same way we did, P-Funk, in the studio. And... Uh, I guess myself and Lynn Mabry and Alex Weir from the Brothers Johnson on rhythm guitar, and Steve Scales on percussion from um, uh, what was, uh, Sagittarius, vocalist. Um, uh, she moved to Europe. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Tina, Tina Turner. Oh, Tina, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sagittarius. Yeah, burn. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, memory's not the, anyway. <laughs> but anyway, we injected some uh, funk-isms on them, and uh, the, then they would stop making sense, and the rest is history. Mr. LeBlanc, um, yes. where were your roots? When you were coming up, were you listening to these guys, or were you oh, more definitely. into the New Orleans thing, or what was going on? Oh, definitely. Uh, in New Orleans, you know, music is life. And I'm from New Orleans. I'm a drummer, so... Zigaboo kind of introduced me to him from the bottom up, not from the commercial component, but right. from what the grassroots of the rhythms were, locking in with the bass. Then you go into the keyboard and, 
you know, the vocals is like the icing on the cake, but you got to get that funk in first. So my introduction to them was from a grassroots point. I was raised in New Orleans housing projects. So you hear the music all the time. I mean, it's playing more than the television set when in that time in the early 70s. And Zigaboo and the brass band people in the community kind of took me to the side and was, you know, you know, giving it to me from that level. And I was like, man, uh, I hear what we're doing in New Orleans. I hear what they're doing. You know, people think it's so far in the New Orleans second line rhythm, as we call it, in the phone, but it's really the same. It comes from that same meter, you know. Yeah. No pun intended to meters, but it comes from that same meter of, of distinction. So, I mean, I, I'm kind of, I'm not kind of, I'm really blessed, you know, to have learned it from there at such a young age. Now, when you, Novino, when you were growing up, you were listening to their, the records by these guys up, up here. Did you, uh, were you influenced by them? Or did you listen to your dad's records? I, I'm still growing up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, absolutely. I mean, I, I listened to all kinds of stuff growing up. Um, Definitely listened to a lot of funk. Uh, my dad's records, uh, George's records, Bootsy. I mean, like I said, though, honestly, like I still find songs and stuff all the time that I've never heard um, that excite me, you know, as, as a musician and just as an appreciator of music. So, yeah. Are you, are you trying to keep, keep funk alive? I haven't heard your band yet, so I, no, I'm just, I'm just, I have no idea what your band's like, so I, yeah, I, would, I would assume they would be. Funky. <laughs> they, they are funky. Trust me. Trust me. All of them, the whole band is. I wanted to ask George, uh, as, as the conceptualist, how did you keep your ears open in the studio? Because I'm a producer, and... The idea of hearing all these different things flying around and then making the decision on what what you know what you want to keep and what you don't, and th there's a part in the film where uh, Don talks about the background vocals and saying you know they'd be singing humming something in the corner and you go oh put that one down and you know how do you, but, but you know having worked at Mo Joe Bet Motown, you had you had um, you were exposed to a lot of different styles, Smokey Holland Doja Holland Barry. You know, Mickey Stevenson, you was exposed to uh, Ashford and Simpson, a lot of different styles. So being in the studio with Bernie, who I've known <laughs> since about 10, 11 years old, when he went away to college to, you know, to be a classical pianist, right. I knew what he could do. I knew that I would use whatever he did. I didn't have to know what he's doing. Right. We, we had you, you, you trusted I trust whatever and I wouldn't let nobody else tell him what to do right. I just said leave him alone Bootsy ain't no way in the world you're going to tell me you know what Bootsy is doing <laughs> it, it, it feels good his brother you know you recognize that from James Brown record that was set I didn't have to know what they were doing right. yeah. so I mean I, that automatically you, you, you brought them in because you knew they I, were gonna I'm, I'm do gonna, the right thing I'm not going to second yeah. I got yeah. to find my part yeah. To go along with it, yeah. and you know that's all I. And so, having been at Joe Betty Motel, I just combined all the different styles of music, even before Motel. Well, you, you did test it with testify. testify. You, you 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 knocked that on the head too. And I was yeah. do, I was doing like everybody else at that time, imitating Bob Dylan in the art with the R and B voice. You know, like yeah, yeah. a lot of people don't realize that's what Mick Jagger was doing. Uh, Leave Vine the Four Tops. Yep. You know, burn it down. People yeah. are searching yeah. for the kind of love yeah. that we possess. He's a singer, yeah. but that was the common thing at that time. Yeah.